All right, we're here actually meeting with um, Mackenzie, Lindsay, Leanna, Leanna, Leanna. and mm -hmm. Jen. Yeah. Okay, I just got to give you a heads up. Um, we just encountered them. She's from Edmonton, Canada, That's right, cool. Jen? And um, these have been the fruits of of uh, their labor because Jen became um, LDS. How many years? Well, you did. My husband did. Your husband did. Okay, yeah. great. Um, well, here we are today, and we have a question for the week. Have you experienced Jesus? And the question is, what does the blood of Jesus mean to you? You're LDS, mm -hmm. and so when you think about the blood of Jesus, um, what does it really mean to you? Um, I think it means that we have a way to return to live with our Heavenly Father because of the atonement of Jesus Christ we all can live again. And that's something that is for all of God's children. Um, not just those who are members of the LDS Church, but we believe that all of God's children have the opportunity to participate in that atonement. It's okay. for all of us. And do you have to do anything to obtain this blood covering you, you know, and, and taking upon your sins and that you are in a position now to be, you know, saved? In that sense, There's, are there any things uh, that you must do to, to obtain the blood of Jesus? Um, well, we believe that we have to live the commandments. Okay. Um, Christ himself said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And that is something that's very specific. Um, but the fact is, is whether we keep all the commandments, if we don't accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, it doesn't mean anything. And so, you know, we have to be able to do what he asks, but we also have to accept him as our Savior. Okay, so I, I love this question because this is a very important question. Now, I'm, I'm born again Christian, mm -hmm. right? And there's a lot of people out there all over the world who watch our shows, and they hear many times from the LDS people who say, you must keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. um, when we look at the com Ten Commandments, they were given to us by, by God, the great I Am, right, with Moses on the, uh, the mount. And what happened? That was during the period of time when Christ didn't come. Would you agree with that? That those commandments, those Ten Commandments, was before Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, we understand after Jesus came, he, was, he came and it changed a lot of things. Right. Do you believe that, you know, when you look at the Jews, the Jewish faith and everything, they had to prove themselves to follow the commandments right. because there wasn't a savior, savior at that time, right? Would you agree with that? Right, yes. And so when Christ came, are we still under that same position to follow those commandments? Because none of us realize that we could be made perfect by following the commandments. I, I think there's also a scripture that says if we miss one, if we break one of his commandments, we break them all, right? Mm -hmm. So we're never made perfect in any way, but we are made perfect in, through the blood of Jesus. Do you agree with that? Yeah, and he said, you know, come unto me and like I will make you perfect. Because the fact is, is none of us can do it on our own. And even if we do everything we can, we still can't make it to heaven without Jesus Christ, without exactly. his blood. And that was necessary. And so we believe that we're, we're kind of showing Christ how much we love him by keeping the commandments. And what do you think are the commandments that, that Christ was really referring to? Well, of course, the Ten Commandments, but the first and great commandment is to love Him and to love our neighbors. And I think that the only way that you can love your neighbors is being a good person and, and listening to a current prophet's voice who, you know, teaches us this is what God asks of us. And so we need to follow Him in that way. You follow the prophet? Yes, but really I'm following Jesus Christ because He's the mouthpiece of the prophet. Okay. So with Christians, what we believe also, just for you to understand this, this is great for you to understand, when we follow the commandments we really as you said you said you have to follow the, what the Lord love the Lord with all your heart mind and strength and then then to love your neighbor but we really believe when we are doing all of that mm -hmm. then we're following everything else does that make sense mm -hmm. because love fulfills the law doesn't it mm -hmm. do, you, do you believe that that love fulfills the law and so when when we're going through this whole experience with Jesus and becoming a new creature uh, we believe that, that that exactly is what occurs, that we follow all those commandments. So we're not under, as a Christian, we're not under all these checklists that, oh, it, oh, I didn't, I just looked at somebody wrong, that I should, wrongly, and I shouldn't have done that, and now I have a sin, I, I broke those commandments. We're covered with, with the blood of Jesus to, to help us out further. Do you, do you believe that too? Yeah, I believe that, but I think it's the same with any laws. They're, they're there to, to protect us. And it may be silly, you may think, well, I should be able to just run the stop sign because there's no one ever driving on the street. But the fact is, is there's a law in place for safety. 
And so whether me keeping all the Ten Commandments or not, if I keep them, I'm going to be more protected. My life is going, I'm going to be healthier. I'm not going to be in jail because I, you know, murdered someone. Yeah. And I think it just brings more joy. And so that's why I choose to keep the commandments. Yeah, I think um, also, I, I agree with you to a point on that too. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that when you become a new creature in Christ, mm -hmm. that, that you really are becoming that way. Does that make sense that you're not going to say, oh, there's a person I want to hurt that person or I want to do these really improper things right. as well. So do you believe that as, as LDS and Christians that, you know, outside of your faith, that, do you believe that um, we could have some commonality of this? Or do you think that's a, a cause of, of a conflict sometimes with, with Christians and, and also LDS people? Because sometimes as Christians, we feel that we, we want to share that with you. Right. And I know in the LDS, do, do you feel like, no, we have to be strong with the Ten Commandments um, and sometimes what we do is we forget the whole purpose of Jesus mm -hmm. and he came to free us yeah. of the bondage when, when you're talking about Jesus Christ and the thing is the the name of our church is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints yeah. so sure. between our faith in Jesus Christ and you know the the typical Christian I guess is what we all really are and we find the commonality and the common ground in Christ we're really living the whole same thing. And through, I guess, the blood of Jesus Christ, we've been able to have this atonement. And Jesus Christ has fulfilled that need and the laws of justice. Mm -hmm. And God is a just God. Exactly. And Perfect. so at the end of the day, we're all going to be saved. Whether it doesn't matter what religion you follow in this life, God will see you in the next life. And he will ask you, you know, what did you do? How did you love me? And at that point, we'll have the ultimate judgment and we'll have the ultimate justice made possible by the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So you believe that, that the Lord will still look at us and judge us by our works? It wouldn't make sense if he didn't. He's a just God. It wouldn't make sense if, if I didn't know any better to be judged for something that, you know, I didn't know better. There's people in all sorts of different feats in their life that die at different stages of their life as children, you know, as yeah elderly or you know they've lived in different situations that gave them different outcomes in their life it wouldn't make sense if i was judged the same as a two-year-old child that has done nothing wrong yeah. i knew better he did not what would happen if all of a sudden I don't, did you guys see the movie god's not dead yeah. great movie mm -hmm. it, it was it went really all throughout the united states it did very well but at the, uh, sorry about if anybody saw didn't see the movie i'm gonna affect it right now Spoiler yeah Spoiler <laughs> Because uh, <laughs> at the very end, the guy who, who was a um, professor of psychology, philosophy, he hated God. He didn't believe that God was real. But at the very, very end, what happened was um, he died. He was about to die, and there was a pastor. And they looked at him, and he was about to die. The pastor came out. He was on the road. He got hit by a car. And the pastor said, this is your last chance. Do you believe in Jesus? And then at that point, he said he claimed that he says, yes, I, I put my heart, my trust, and my faith in him. And at that point, he said to him, he says, well, you're going to know a lot more about God in the next couple of minutes than we all are going to know. Because he put his faith in that. Do you believe that he, that individual who didn't do any works, didn't follow any commandments at all, that he was going to be able to make it to heaven in the next couple of minutes after his death? You know, it's... A lot of our beliefs, it's going to take a, a while to talk about, and I don't think we have, we actually don't have time to go into it, but, you know, there there's life after death, and there's still time to learn post-mortem. There's still things out there that we can learn and grow, and this life is a life to prepare to truly meet God and be brought back in His presence, but... But the question is that, what I was just saying, yeah. do you believe that that person who didn't follow the commandments, didn't do anything, didn't do any works of kindness, uh, and really no good works of, of that much, just was horrendous with what he did, but he put his faith, the last breath, do you believe that he would be able to be with God? Eventually, there's still, like, that's why I said, after this life, there's still time to learn and grow. Um, we don't believe you go straight to heaven after this life. Right. You don't? No. Not straight after you die. There's still time to learn and grow and prepare because life is a three-parter. There was the pre-existence, there's this life, and there's life after death. And there will be time before, you know, So what does it mean the then when, you, when, when in the Bible it talks about that once you put your faith
faith and your trust, you're saved. Are you really saved then? Are you really saved? And it, what the Bible also says, there's another scripture too that I just want to ask you on, on this. When it says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Once you die and you're a believer in him, that you're present with the Lord. So you don't believe at all that you're present with God after you die? Well, we believe that you will obviously meet God be, and he will judge you. And so you, everyone will be present with the Lord in that aspect. They will be there to be judged. But those that will actually go get to live always in God's presence, um, that is dependent on what if they kept what God asked. And those things are making covenants with him and promises because he wants us to have all these blessings. And it wouldn't be fair for someone who was a good person versus someone who was a mass murderer to both be able to live with God. That defeats the whole purpose of coming to this earth and being tested and showing God that you know we're willing to do what he asks. And if you you look at our current So grace grace is not a factor of that's more about works and is that what you're saying? Well, the fact that each of us cuz grace really covers the fact that each of us will be able to be resurrected and to live with yeah. you know God again if we do as he asks. And so the yeah. atonement it covers physical death and spiritual death, but you have to accept it and part of accepting it is doing the things that he asks. Do you remember the, the parable that Jesus had in, in the New Testament? And he talked about this. Do you remember the, the, um, the coin? And he was involved in the, he was a, um, what was it? It was the landowner? That he was the individual who? We actually do have to go. Oh, you have to yeah, go? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Okay. All right. But it was a great parable. Anyway, God makes that decision. Mm -hmm. It's not a based on works. And I, I mean, in, in, in my belief and what the Bible teaches, I don't think that, you, you, how many more works can you do to prove to God that you are justified with him. Isn't it the great, ultimately, isn't the great work of what Jesus did on the cross that ultimately when he meets with you, he looks at, are you with Jesus or are you not with Jesus? Do you ultimately believe that? Yeah, because without him suffering for our sins in the garden of Gethsemane and dying on the cross, the cross none of us would see God. So that is ultimately, yeah. you know, what it's all about. So if we have him, we love him, we're connected, He's going to look at us and say, oh, well, you have Jesus, but you haven't done this, this, and this, and this, so out. You don't believe that, do you? I don't really think that it's all about a checklist, because obviously God knows our heart. But I think yeah, in the exactly. end, we, we all can agree that we believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior, and that is the only way. Yeah. And the, the steps that we take, we may take different steps because we know we are a better people person because of it. And you may decide that, you know, just saying that you accept Jesus, you're saved. But it's all about being a better person. And the fact that you've accepted Jesus and you're saved, it has changed you. And you have done things differently. You're not out murdering 100%. people. Yeah. But that's because you choose to do that. No, I don't plan to do that at all. <laughs> and we're, you know, that's because you choose to do that. And we, we have just been given counsel to do the same thing. So yeah. I think that's the biggest difference. Okay, us. I appreciate your comments. I know, and I took too much more time. I just want to thank them for coming here. Thank and you. God bless you guys. And, yeah, thank and you very uh, much. we appreciate what you, you offered. Thank, thank you, you so much. You bet. Bye-bye.